Good evening, this is the Oscar Expert here with Brother Roe, and it is time for Supporting Actor and Supporting Actress Predictions. The memberships are in full force, folks. We're, we're, we're posting regularly, it's $2 a month. It's almost like we have a second channel where we just talk about random things, and you can have access to it for $2 a month. Also got another single from the up upcoming album, or Orville's Epotamus, which you're gonna wanna listen to that. I've been working hard it's at your my, music. It's my new album, it's coming out. You can check that out. It's on my, it's on the, all the streaming. Let's just start with Supporting Actor because it's just really crowded and it's kind of fun right now. Oh, yeah. So we actually, this is a good day to do it because we did get some first look images at the piano lesson, which is important in both these categories. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Sam Jackson, like, I, I don't have anything more to say, though, about him specifically. Yeah. Like, he looks like people, if he's going to kill it, if he's eating. We all know. If he's eating, we're going to want to give oh, him the Oscar. Eating. We're going oh, to want him to give, the, to give him the Oscar. So, I mean, right now... 72% of, of the award expert app thinks he's going to win. People were predicting this like years year. out, years Last out. Year. So, you know, we'll see when we go to TIFF, we will yeah. see what happens. So there was a lot more to talk about with the piano lesson trailer than anticipated. We did talk about the trailer on memberships. Definitely looks a lot better than we expected. It is dipping a little bit into genres that the Academy doesn't typically mess with, like, you know, being a thriller or supernatural. But I think it'll mostly be pretty grounded. Now, Jackson is just didn't really get much in that trailer. Deadweiler, on the other hand, like, oh man, you know, it's possible that maybe she wins and he doesn't. And you know, he's good, but he's not like getting what we needed to see for, for that win. I'll still have him at number one for now. But, you know, things could change after the festival, after we see all these movies. I think Clarence Macklin and Sing Sing is going to be good. It's long enough into the Sing Sing box office run that I think we can confirm that it will be probably the lowest grossing nominee. You're going to concede it, that it's not going to have this, like, box office I don't think it's going to, it's moment. not going to make more than 10 million domestic. Yeah, okay. It's going to be a matter of bringing the film back at screenings and everything later in the year, which we kind of said. And that's going to be a fine enough strategy. And we yeah. know that Clarence Macklin wants to campaign because... In that Good Morning America interview, when asked about like, oh, do you think this movie could get Oscars? Colin Domingo was like, oh, you know, we love the film and, you know, it's just wonderful to see people connecting with it. And then Clarence Macklin was like, no, like we, we actually do. We actually do with like awards. He wants to be nominated and he's going to go again. I don't know how much it matters that people want to be nominated. No, it's just that he's going to campaign. He's going to be there. He's going to go to the events. You know of what I mean? Course. Like he's not, he is not going to be hiding this award season. So well, why would he be hiding? Not everybody likes to campaign. Buddy, of course he's gonna campaign. I'm just saying that he, I think he's gonna be good on the campaign trail too. But Sing Sing's gonna do, is gonna be a solid campaign trail movie because of the whole ensemble. Even on its worst day, it's not past lives or women talking because Why? I think it's going to get acting. I think both the actors are coming along. I think Clarence that's Macklin fair. is that's coming fair. along. I don't think that he's gonna be also, exchangeable. Yeah, that's fair. And you know, there will be, I think there will be three SAG nominations for Sing Sing. I could see Sing Sing dropping, you know, so, like off of number one and just landing somewhere among the 10 and I don't really know where it is. In that case, I don't think Clarence Macklin is 100% in. I don't think he's as locked as Coleman Domingo is. Oh, I think he's very locked. I don't think you can, I think he's like 80 or 90%. I think he's pretty damn in I'll there. say 80%, honestly, because I'm getting scared about this category. There's a lot going on in here. And I, I think, you know, he's going to get SAG. Pretty, but pretty, pretty his, his about story that. is too good. I don't, yeah, I think he probably gets BAFTA. He'll get Critics' Choice, too, I think. He's going to get he's going to get everything, and his, his story is too but good. It could, no, no, it could be that he's great, and he deserves to be nominated. I, I wholeheartedly believe that he deserves it. And I hope he gets nominated. I saw the film again, and he's excellent. Critics groups will do it too. Everyone's Critics gonna do yeah. it. Yeah, but I just, I just wonder if maybe there's a way he could get snubbed. People see the movie, they're gonna nominate him. It's I've got him in. Easy one, two, three. That's all I'm I've telling you. I've got him in. Stanley Tucci for Conclave. We think that he's gonna be the bigger play than Lithgow. There is a possibility though that Lithgow is double nominated alongside him, and I think it's more likely than people think. Even yeah. if Tucci is like obviously the standout, the fact that Lithgow is a well-respected veteran actor who's never been nominated and he's finally part of like a best picture package maybe top five movie that could get him in just because they're like hey let's go like let's get you in there for your first nom like that actually might be compelling enough even if he's like jesse plemons power of the dog where maybe he's like yeah he's good in that okay but, but power of the dog was like the front-running movie when the nominations happened 
Well, Conclave so, might get a Conclave would have to front run. I mean, who says to to get a double supporting nomination? You need to be like top three. So. That's kind of true. It's pretty true. Do you think there's a chance that Conclave is like? just okay or that's just not gonna happen i don't really understand how that's possible like i have to leave the possibility open but it just seems like it's so poised to be one of the huge award season movies i think edward norton in a complete unknown i think we may be heading for that yeah now a few test screening reactions came out about a complete unknown and the report was that they were all right probably like yeah, pretty the, the, good the movies like okay and you know what and and, and but but however keep in mind Test screening reports are like iffy on how trustworthy they are in general. And also the one of the complaints was that the film is too long. The film just got shot. Like I'm surprised that they even have a final cut of it at this point. So of course mm. the film will probably be trimmed down. It will be different, but that's just a little bit that I needed though. Just a little bit of like, you know, the film's like, all right to be like, I'm snap me out. Like just to be, just to kind of shake me out of this, like, Oh, complete unknown is just kind of, too big to fail, like it's gonna do box office and then it's just gonna happen, like... No, I, I don't believe that anymore. I just feel like a complete unknown might be just good. And Timothy Chalamet will probably still get nominated and Edward Norton will probably still be a contender, but I could just see it not being a Best Picture movie. <laughs> yeah, is, is, that, mean, is that so crazy? Well, I was looking for a reason to put Saturday Night in, honestly, because I think that that's yeah. going to do very well. It makes sense to me that a cle um, complete unknown would be fine. Like, it, it, yeah, I don't see it being I think a movie it that looks away. But, fine but as well. What else did the reaction say? They said Ed Nortz was a, a real standout and possibly yeah. the best in the film. And he's like transforming a little bit too. Yeah, he's playing like, and he's also the second build. I think he's a really major player in this film. Yeah, and very, he very clearly. is also singing and playing a real person. And so maybe this film is more like Nyad, where yeah. it just, you know, they just want to nominate the actors or something yeah. like that. I don't I'm know. comfortable at this point just putting it in for actors and just leaving a question mark in Best Picture and then putting like Saturday Night in and whatever the fuck other TIFF movies I see that come out and get good reviews. But is it also possible that he just doesn't come along if the movie's not in Best Picture as just a, you know, oh, that seems like it made sense, but you know how things go when you're not in Best Picture, you can drop, you can just drop. Doesn't always make yeah. sense. You're not, you're never a lock when you're not in Best Picture, that's true. But Edward Norton's one of those actors that, you know, he could easily remain solidly in the conversation, just like Denzel Washington for Gladiator 2, even if the film isn't in there. Denzel Washington, when the trailer came out, I kind of went, yeah, I think so. I think yeah. that, you know, even if the movie's not a thing, it's it could still be Wakanda Forever. We get a few texts along with a supporting nomination. But Wakanda Forever, like, it was surprising because Angela Bassett didn't even have a lot of screen time. I mean, people really. He looks like he is though. in half of the movie at, in a supporting role, so it's a it's like nearly a lead. Gladiator Two. To be fair, the reaction is that have been very strong out like, of test screenings. Out of test screenings and also early footage that people have seen, they've been very impressed. Okay, but, but I, th I I do think it makes sense that early test screening reactions for Gladiator Two are really good. Why? And I don't think it matters that much. They were mixed for Napoleon. They were? They were kind of 50-50. Some people were saying it was Masterpiece, and then other yeah. people were saying it was... Well, there you go. I mean, it depends who you ask. Yeah, but everybody... Well, what if it's everybody I think more asked. people will like Gladiator than Napoleon, for sure. But I don't know if Gladiator is going to be... But they were also saying, like, that oh... Seriously. They were saying, oh, this is going to actually, like, take control of the, the box office for a little while. Like, this is yeah. a big yeah. deal. And so I think that the exposure will really help it. I think one of the takeaways from the film, no matter what, will be that Denzel Washington was great. There are some actors where they never get enough of nominating you. Denzel Washington might be that kind of person. Because otherwise, you could make the argument that, you know, if Gladiator 2 is not in picture, they might just not feel the urgency for Denzel again, even though he's very good. But I think that Denzel might be in that territory where they say, yes, Denzel again and again and again and again, pretty much as long as you're very good. Well, here's who will definitely say yes to it. I think he's gonna get a SAG nomination for sure. Yeah, that's pretty popular. So it's like SAG, Critics' Choice, I could see Golden Globe. Let's say he doesn't get BAFTA, and then it's like, that's the only precursor he didn't get. So I think there's a strong case, very strong case for Denzel Washington. And then when it comes to the Oscars, like obviously everybody knows and loves Denzel Washington in the industry. So what are you gonna do? It looks like a really big role. I don't even have Gladiator 2 in my best picture list. I acknowledge it could get nominated that too. That might happen also. It so could, it it could even get nominated. nominated. I'm also very tempted by 
Guy Pierce for The Brutalist. Now, mm. I think that we, I think it's fair to say, let's wait till we see the movie on this. But in pretty much every category, I am comfortable being like, look, The Brutalist is gonna is like gonna be it. All right, The Brutalist is this classic American epic with an intermission shot on seventy millimeter that people are gonna say, wow, we don't get films of this scope and doing like this big epic period thing anymore. We yeah. rarely get these. I mean, Scorsese's giving us a couple of those, like you may well, be like, there will be blood or- Oppenheimer just came out. Sure. You could acknowledge or that like, Oppenheimer was kind of like that. Or like a once upon a time in America though. I think that yeah. it will harken back to like older films that people like in a way that will appeal to pretty much everybody in the Academy. Yeah. The, the themes sound very universal. I yeah. think the immigration story, and it seems like it's a dissection of America and the American dream. What are you gonna do? You know, what are you gonna do when that movie comes out and then gets Probably wins Golden Lion. Adrian Brody looks really strong. He's probably going to be great in the in the film. Guy Pierce, I believe, and, is and, second build. And yes. if this, fi yeah, for sure, I think. Well, maybe Felicity Jones, but like, I think it's Guy Pierce. I think he's. I think a he's the second biggest character, character in the he's, film. He's very big in it. He's also never been nominated. He's beloved in the industry. He's been around for over two decades, where people know his name, and he's never been nominated. And so you're going to tell me that he has a major role in a film that may very well play across the board and he doesn't come along, I think that we really need to take that seriously. I mean, it's, we might know immediately, like, you know, 10 minutes into reading reviews that he's getting nominated and then I'll have to throw him in and I'll have to take somebody out. I would throw either Edward Norton or Denzel Washington under the bus. Like, it wouldn't really matter who it is. Like, I would just pick one of them. I could flip a coin and just see who I want to take out for him. If he did get the buzz we're anticipating. So I would actually gonna, I would actually maybe lean towards the Denzel Washington makes it in at the end of the day. I don't know if Edward Norton would would survive a complete unknown being like not very good. At the same time, being the I think it's like being the Ricardos too. Kind of, yeah. Three acting nominations for being the Ricardos. That's crazy that that happened. I can't even believe it's still Well, this do day. you I mean, do you want to just throw him in then? Maybe we should. We're talking the talk. Maybe we should. Maybe it's possible though that he's very good, but he's not like that much of a character, nor is the character as emotional as like the Adrian Brody's character or Felicity Jones. Maybe he's a little bit of a colder rich guy. Why is that and why is that against his case? You know who was cast as him in the last um Mark like, Rylance. Previously, yeah. So yeah. Mark Rylance, like you don't need to be emotional. I mean, look at Joe Pesci in the Irishman. Ah, uh, let's not let's let's keep let's him not? six, man. Oh, Ooh, so close, so close. So close, yeah. This is all come at the expense of one Kieran Culkin, who, so great in a real pain. Yeah. But... I just can't see it anymore. Yeah, it just, just feels can't. like Searchlight's trying to pull out a complete unknown, and they're not, you know, it's not, there shouldn't be that much confidence that it's like a main horse type of movie. It just is the kind of thing that can fall through the cracks. I don't know how yeah. else to put it. He'd probably be the lone nomination for A Real Pain no, or screenplay. screenplay. Like, there's basically two maybes for A Real Pain, and it's screenplay and Culkin. I mean, he's like a better shot than a Charles Melton, for example, just because he's been recognized in the industry more than Charles Melton had previously been. Is he going to win Critics Awards? He might He might win Critics Awards. Some, maybe. No. You don't think so? I just don't think so. Because okay. these kind of, these things just happen, you know? They just happen. It's like, oh, it was like John Majaro, too, where it's like, oh, like he, he felt like he could stay in and then he just doesn't. And it's like, man. Yeah, this performance is a lot bigger than that one, though. I know, it's like, it bigger, but the that... movie's not in. So, yeah. Jeremy Strong and The Apprentice, if that movie comes out, I still don't know. Maybe it'd yeah. just be Sebastian Stan. Given how crowded it now is, I'm I'm uncertain as well. I think supporting actor is harder to get into for him than it is for Sebastian Stan to make it into lead. Jeremy Strong was impressive in it, but the real impressive person was Sebastian Stan. And Jeremy Strong is kind of like one thing throughout, except there's a little bit of like a twist on his character in the end. I still don't think it's coming out. Now, Drew Starkey for Queer. This could be a very interesting type of breakout performance. That could be a critic's thing. Oh, critics are gonna really- Critics could eat that performance like up. this one. And it, it gets snubbed for an Oscar. That, that's, that's what I think will happen. Yeah. It, they'll eat it up. He's gonna have a lot of screen time. He's gonna have an incredible chemistry with Daniel Craig. Heartbreaking scenes, perhaps, and yet, you know, he doesn't make it because he's too new of a face. Probably. Maybe like Dominic Sessa. 
Probably, right? That's what I'm thinking. And then you have maybe Hamish Linklater for Nickel Boys if you want to do somebody. I think he's playing like a really gross, like an man, evil, an evil pre- man, uh, president of the school or something, something like that, or a teacher. Mark Edelstein for Anora. You like him a lot. I thought he was fantastic, and he's one of my favorite lead perf- lead performances of the year. I would put him in lead, but he could easily be campaigning and supporting given his screen time. I would love for him to be nominated. I hope critics groups do it. Him getting the Academy nomination is probably pretty slim, just because again, it's like young actors actor unknown really hard to break in. Adam Pearson for A Different Man. I think he might get some critics' attention for that, but... Yeah, there's, there's no way it gets an Oscar nomination, but he is great yeah. in it. Michael Shannon for The End. Kind of waiting and seeing on that one. Wait and see. Uh, Harris Dickinson for Blitz. You know, some people still think that he's getting nominated, but I just don't have much faith in that. I don't really know. I don't know. I just don't think so. We'll see, because he could get BAFTA. He or Stephen Graham could still get BAFTA. Stephen Graham, I don't think, is going to be in it a lot. Well, I mean, Harris Dickinson could still get BAFTA because, one, he's British, and two, they're going to have an absolute hard-on for Blitz. The BAFTAs are, like, the the primary reason why I think Blitz will get nominated no matter what this award season, because even if it underperformed at SAG, even if it somehow didn't get PGA, it'll get all the BAFTA nominations because it's about London. Jeremy Pope, the collaboration, I'm just not seeing it. I don't think it's coming out this year. Paul Reese, you sing, sing. Remember how people thought that was kind of a thing at the beginning? It's just not. Uh, it's not. It just a thing. isn't. No. Uh, Paul Bettany for here. I mean, you know, good luck. Good luck, boys. Good luck. I bet John Turturro for the room next door. It seems like it's so much about the two no. leads, but definitely not. The Dune Boys, look, there's another thing where... They're, they're way, they're so low down. They're, not, they're now so everybody can see it, though. Yeah, everyone gets first it people now. Were like, well, yeah, Austin Butler's still in it. It's like, no, no, now you see how he's so not. Like, he's just so not. Stuff like Chris Hemsworth, too. It's like, that's the kind of thing where once you hear... Once you accept that Furios is not happening, you just... You can't yeah. even, like, consider it a little bit, even though he's very good in it. Yeah, I just can't even. By far, it. the the most underestimated is Guy Pearce and the Brutalist. Is number sixteen in the community. Like I think that is by far the biggest underestimation, and he's going to rock it up to the top ten. Yuri Borisov for Anora. No, it's like a very slim possibility. I don't think it's going to happen. See, I'm thinking no acting nominations for Saturday Night, even if it gets Best Picture. An early test screening reaction said that you know the audience was eating up the movie. Gabriel Labelle they thought was the MVP. And the supporting cast is great, but it's hard to single anybody out. That's all I need to know. I know. Hard to single anybody out. Exactly. That's what I thought was going to happen. Exactly. So supporting actress, I think we got to decide between Anjanue Ellis for Nickel Boys, which, you know, let's be real. We have no clue what's going on there. It is purely speculation that, like, Anjanue Ellis has built up a lot of goodwill and that the movie will be very strong in picture as well. I think the speculation in part is that she is the biggest name in the cast and the screenwriters seem to have realized that her presence in the film could be a linchpin for the movie's success. So I think they've given that character a bigger role, and I think she's either the mother or the grandmother. She's like the grandmother. Of the lead character, of the lead she's boy. She's the grandmother of the lead boy. It makes sense to speculate that they gave her a significant role in the film. Like, she's the top build. The top build. And she's not the lead. And it seems like an emotionally heavy subject matter. Like, I think there's a lot of potential for that performance to... Yeah, even win an Oscar. Even win. I think I still have her at number one. She's like one of the only performances on this whole list that we haven't even seen an image from. But I kind of agree. But but it's based on the the prediction that Nickel Boys will get Best Picture, which you agree with. Like, we have it pretty high up. It's like only rising. And it's based on the fact that she's the biggest name in the cast. And that she's a previous nominee and she has industry. And a grandma role is very important. Like, yeah. those, those kind of roles do well at the Academy. Alternatively, Daniel Debile in The Piano Lesson, like, it's just hard for me to say that that would win two supporting Oscars and it's not, like, in picture. Yeah. Unless you want to say it's in picture because of that, I guess. I don't think it's impossible. And I do think Daniel Debweiler is in the top two and, and is potentially, you know, could potentially she, win She for looks it. like she, she might be, like, is going fantastic. to be incredible and have a yeah. lot of screen time and be a no-brainer. We are yeah. not going to have to have Academy Award nomination list Daniel Debweiler any longer. It's oh, been yeah. two years too long. Devastating. Just still one of the most devastating snubs. Like, yeah. phenomenal actress. Uh, She's number one in the app. Yeah. She has 43% of people thinking she will win. After that piano lesson trailer, I think we got to have Debweiler at number one. She looks like she might even be the standout. People come away from it saying, oh, everyone's great. Jackson's excellent. But Debweiler, that's what I think is going to happen. Also, Nickel Boys. I've seen a couple reactions. 
they're good. They were saying that the movie's really noteworthy for its style and that a lot of the sensibilities of the director did carry over from, you know, his documentary. It makes me think that it may be the kind of style that doesn't showcase the performances in like a, a very traditional or classical way. And so I think that there should be a little bit more skepticism around Ange Newell, so we also don't know anything about it. And so yes, Deb Weiler is the number one now. Potentially number three. We haven't talked about this in a while, have we? Amelia Perez and supporting actress. I'm getting more comfortable with the idea that they're gonna put Zoe Saldana in supporting and Gascon goes lead. It, it happening. feels like Gascon owns the film and Zoe Saldana, although she is the protagonist, she plays a supporting role to help Gascon get what she wants. Although I was, I really did not think of Zoe Saldana as a lead, as a supporting performance when I watched the film. I was like, that's the lead, obviously it's the protagonist. It makes sense and like that framing does help me, you know, story-wise put them into these categories. And I think it's going, I think it's what's probably gonna happen. I just think that they're gonna want Gosco and lead. The movie's name is her name. What I said makes sense. She is driving the film and she's even driving Zoe Saldana's character. She'll get nominated if she's in supporting. I think Amelia Perez is like a multi-action nomination movie. So I would put her at number three with the caveat that the category placement here is not set in stone. I think I would still have um, the other two women above her. She's in the film a lot. I don't know if she has like, oh, that one scene. It's like so powerful, brings the house down, that kind of thing. I don't think and it's who does quite have there. that? And who probably does have that? Uh, Rosalini. Ro Rosalini. Rosalini probably has, is, is riding off of that like alone. I even thought before the trailer, I was like, she's gonna be like Emily Blunt and Oppenheimer. Yeah. She's not gonna do that much. She's gonna come <laughs> in one scene, absolutely make everybody clap in their hands. And then she's gonna get nominated, and yeah. like now the trail the trailer comes out. I'm like, I, I see where she's doing it. I oh, know yeah. where she's up. And You're, then yeah. we have a reaction that, that I've been I've been told that that's exactly what she is in the movie. Is she's Emily Blunt? So you know, I yeah. I'm gonna have to just maintain. That Here's this what is it the is. Case right now. When you see Rosalini, she's already like a big name, and she's going to be a big presence. And even she's... with a smaller role, you'll be like, oh, I want to see more of that. Like, give me more of her. Who is that? Why is that character kind of shrouded in mystery? Like, what's she up to? You're gonna be wondering that the whole film. Final scene comes around, or like, tor you know, somewhere in the th third act, and you're like, that's what I needed. Like, that's what I wanted from from Rosalini. Yes. Like, let's do the nomination. Oh yeah, Tilda Swinton, the room next door. I mean, it seems like these two are gonna be nearly leads. They're probably they're gonna just gonna. Have I feel a lot like they're gonna time. share screen time. It might be neck and neck, and they just fuck it. One of them is lead, one of them is supporting. Anyway. Looks like Tilda Swinton is um, the second uh, listed on the poster. The Room Next Door could be May, December, and she's not a lock because of it. I'm not predicting The Room Next Door for Best Picture. If it's not in Best Picture, something else could come along, come up. And something that could be in Best Picture that could steal it away is actually Felicity Jones and The Brutalist, right? Yeah. Because if that gets in Best Picture and she gets a lot of hype. A decade after her first nomination, my feeling about Felicity Jones was that she was just not gonna happen ever again. It just felt like she's yeah, she not like, a little bit from, you know, gonna take yeah. off or like do something that's super, I guess, like unexpected or, or baity. But maybe this is her chance to kind of impress critics a little bit more. I, I think that she's gonna get a lot of acclaim for it. Yeah. It seems that she's playing the wife of Adrian Brody's character. Yeah. She's gonna be with him every step of the way. And I mean, a three and a half, and a half hour yeah. film, you're gonna have some screen time. You got screen time, time huh? right? So yeah, maybe she gets nominated for The Brutalist, right? That's right. pretty possible, that's fair. Yeah, that's a little harder for me to say though, because I can't tell if The Brutalist is like a man movie. You know I think I mean? it's a little bit of a man movie, but you can get nominated as a woman in a man movie. Sure. Sometimes it, it she even might helps. get nominated. The rest of this category is is very interesting. It is um, and here's part of the reason why because we don't know. <clears> if you look at the community, people are starting to try and call Saoirse Ronan for Blitz. In fact, twenty two percent of people say she's getting nominated and supporting right now. She's number six in actress and supporting actress right now. Percent are trying to say that she's gonna win. I don't really think that that's the way it works where like someone drops down to supporting who could be lead and then they just win because of it. That's what people want to happen. That's what people want to happen. Your app had her at number one in the beginning of the year. Yeah. And they're probably, because they're young, they're obsessed <laughs> with the idea of Saoirse Ronan getting her first Oscar. <laughs> I want her to win an Oscar. I think she's been amazing in, in so many movies, but I don't see it being like, Gonna, you know, the best, most distinct performance of her career. That's that's my guess right now. We have actually a New York Film Festival description that makes me think that we should keep her in lead. And here it is. McQueen tells his tale from the parallel perspectives of working class single mother Rita and her nine-year-old son as they become separated within the labyrinth of a city under siege. So, 
parallel perspectives. Mm. That means that sometimes it's going to be following the kid going around. Sometimes it's going to be following her at home. Well, I guess it, technically it's enough that they could put her in supporting, but I It'd think they're like going to try to put Patel her in. It'd be like a Dev Patel and Lion category placement if they put her in supporting. Yeah, but because she's Circe Ronan and she's been nominated in lead yeah. three times... I think they will probably feel like they have a good shot keeping her in lead. I'm not going to try to call it at this point, but if she did go supporting and it was official, would you put her in? Mm. I'd probably put her in over Tilda Swinton. I guess that makes enough sense. Lady Gaga is also like... Yeah, Lady, Lady Gaga is the other Some split predictions with her. I still also am leaning that she's going to go lead here. It just yeah. makes a little more sense to me that... Also, think about what she would want. That's another thing I haven't yeah. considered yet. What would Lady Gaga want? She would want to go lead. She doesn't want to go supporting. Yeah. And a lot of these placements, it seems like they're more up to the actors than you'd think. You think it's like the studio telling them what to do. But, you know, in the case of uh, Michelle Williams and the Fablemans, apparently it was up to her. She wanted to be a lead. Look, maybe you'll see the movie and you'll go, wow, that was a supporting performance. No, I I don't think it's going to be like that. Honestly, that'd be kind of crazy. I don't think I'm going to say that's a supporting performance. A supporting performance to me is like, there's a few scenes. It's a romance, and it's... And it's about two people. When I reminded myself that they, the actors have a say where they go, I'm like, Lady Gaga's going to choose lead, isn't she? Now, Selena Gomez, Amelia Perez, many people think this, mainly people who are Selena Gomez fans. I think if you're really looking at what just makes the most sense to happen with Amelia Perez. Zoe Saldana is more recognized like as an actress, has been in a lot of stuff, and seems like, oh, this is her time to get her first nomination, yeah. and has more screen time in the movie. Like, it just makes much more sense. Could the movie get double supporting nominations? Maybe. Well, here's the, the thing. Going through my SAG predictions, looking at supporting actress, and I'm like, it feels like Amelia Perez is going to get double supporting nominated at SAG. It just feels like it. I don't think The Room Next Door is going to do well at SAG. <laughs> I just don't. Yeah, that's I don't know true. why I don't see it. She might get a SAG nom. Yeah. So, like, when it comes to, okay, who else would I put in for a SAG nom? All right, uh, maybe Felicity Jones is so good that she'll get in. But, like, the next on my list for a SAG nom is Selena Gomez. I just think she would have enough fans in there. And she's good in the movie. Like, she's definitely got the screen time to get nominated in a supporting performance for that. I think the other two performances are stronger, but... You know, it's kind of a three-hander movie. I think sometimes the Oscars really like you to kind of prove yourself. And I'm sure they'll think she's good in it, but yeah. I think they, they're they a little gatekeepy sometimes, too. Yeah. And they might be more prone to go for something that's, you know, Tilda Swinton in the room next door, or, the Almodovar. Like, you or know. Leslie Manville in Queer. But, but uh, we, we don't, don't know, know what she's doing on. in it. For, for all we know, there. she could be in one scene, and she could be she could eat in that scene, but we don't know if we just don't know what the role is, so that's why I'm like, all right, well, we'll reserve that for after we see the film. I mean, I it seems to see it, it seems like Call Me by Your Name, where you have a lead performance in in Daniel Craig, you have a a very prominent supporting performance in Drew Starkey, aka the Ar- Army Hammer, who who's very good but doesn't get nominated, and then she, maybe she's Michael Stolberg or somebody. Right. right, her character is in the book, but like doesn't even speak in the book. Apparently, like is barely in it. So they absolutely wrote a larger character into the script. There's no way Leslie Manville would be in here if she didn't have a significant oh, role. Oh, you don't know that. Some people are like, damn, like I'll sign up for anything if it's Luca Guadagnino, you know? Mm, but why? Why get Leslie Manville if you're going to... But why not get someone else? I don't think Leon's happening for his three daughters. You know, it just feels like that movie is, yeah. is too small feeling and it doesn't feel like a Netflix priority, even though we'll say it every time. D- Natasha Leone, that's easily one of the best performances you're going to see this year. Unfortunate that will probably be left to, you know, critics to award her and then industry will just leave her behind. Who else do you even think is very possible here? Because I'm, I'm, yeah. we're kind of getting into the So weeds. Connie Nielsen from Gladiator 2, funnily enough, in a couple of the screenings, she's been singled out as a standout, potentially... Oscar nomination worthy performance. I don't really buy it. Like, not because I don't think that she'll be, I think she'll be very good in it and she will be a standout, but I just don't see that as being the kind of performance that like easily gets a nomination for an Oscar. You'll have to believe it when you see it, I think. Katherine Keener and Joker Folly Do. I just I, think it's delete, funny to I have this in. I deleted That's it. That's fine. She's not going to get nominated, but I think it is funny to talk about the fact that Katherine Keener's in that movie and they're trying to keep the role a secret. Rachel Senate Saturday Night, again. It doesn't eh. seem like there will be... No, but listen listen here. Let's what, just listen she's a female and she's going to stand out. She's married to Lorne Michaels during this movie. Combine that with the fact that she's like third build in a lot of places, yeah. it looks like. 
She might have a bigger role than a lot of the supporting cast, and mm -hmm. she's having a really good career. She's coming up. If she is the right role, then maybe she can happen, but it probably won't. It doesn't seem like it's a slam dunk. No. And she didn't get that much in the trailer. We didn't see her really at all. Joan Chen for Dee Dee. I think she's getting indie spirit. I don't think it's going to go much further than that, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, she is really good in it, though. Dee Dee's like a little bit of a small movie, and it just doesn't seem like a an awards season priority. I do agree that, that it's it shouldn't really be a priority, even though I think it's great. I just don't think it would land any nominations, it's, it's, even if they yeah. tried really hard. The coming of age genre doesn't always hit. You have Kelly Riley for Here, which is just, you know, just in case Here is actually like, wow, yeah. that was a thing after all. Ha <laughs> ha. We have Moses Ingram for the end, just in case the end is a thing. Kathy Burke for Blitz, who, you know, maybe she will be very small in it, but there is that chance, again, that she could get a BAFTA nom because she's a BAFTA favorite. What do you think about Elle Fanning for a complete unknown? Is that is that nothing? Is that worth having on the list? I think she's going to be in it a lot. I think the girlfriend of the celebrity role is just not, is just never really... Yeah. Meaty enough. I don't see it. You could throw in maybe Jennifer Lopez for Unstoppable. Yeah, I have her in my I have her in my predictions somewhere. Just because it's like a mother role, and I think she'll be a standout in the film, but I don't know if Unstoppable is going to be that big of a deal. Pretty is there thorough. anybody on the app that people think is happening? Rebecca Ferguson in Doom Part 2. <laughs> that's, no. that's not going to happen. Some have Fernanda Montenegro for I'm Still Here as, you know, getting a second nomination. She does play the older version of the character mm. who has dementia. That's probably a fair one to just leave in there somewhere. If you want to, but I, I, I don't see anything that's making me think that I'm Still Here is going to exceed an international feature nom. That concludes our supporting predictions. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Do you think any of these category placements are going to change?